to make special sound effects, of which there are three aspects to every film. Music, dialogue, sound effects. Of sound effects, hard effects, Foley effects. Why Foley? Jack Foley came up with the idea many years ago that, gee, rather than cutting each little sound, let's perform them. It'll sound more natural, have more life, be quicker, more efficient, and better. Foley is live sound effects recorded on a sound stage in sync with the picture to replace any sound that needs to be replaced. The first time that I ever found out that this job existed, I just said, this is for me. You get to play in the dirt all day and come up with funny props. The hardest part of the job for me really is the physicality. That was perfect, let's move on. A big pad for the body sound, a bunch of celery for some high-end crunch, and a nice wet chamois will give me a fleshy sound. I'm gonna take some breakfast cereal, put it in here with the cornstarch. These are gloves with paper clips taped onto the ends for the dog claws, and you get a good paw sound out of the glove. The creative part of this job is using anything and everything that'll work, whether it's real or not. The Foley philosophy is do it till it's right, period. We cut to the inside and Batman's capes, whatever he's in, flowing, and uh, maybe grabs the car keys. Well, the car buy is going to be sound effects, okay? But the car keys and the cape is what I would do. And how do we know that? Supervising sound editor, designer, he, she, or them will decide. So it's a team. So that's the team. Now, mind you, it is a performance, what I do. And where did I learn that performance? Right here. Her husband, Brian Morgan, was kind enough to take me in when I was a knucklehead and, uh, and have me come in and say, uh, well, you know what, we'll put you to work on the lights. Great. The next day I find out, no, no, he cast me in a play. Point being, I, I, I realized that I could actually go beyond what I thought I could do. Don't be afraid. So I guess what I'm saying is, you know, John Rash, let's give him a big, yeah, great. I'm very grateful for that. But understand one thing. It's not me. It is not me. It's all of us. That's what I want you all to know here today. What's most important is, okay, how many people want to work in the film business? Raise your hand. Great. Now, okay, look at him. Is he your competition? No. He's somebody you want to work with. He's somebody that if you can help him be a success, you'll be a success. That's critical. That's the key, I'm telling you, folks. Because if you're in it just for yourself, that's all that's going to happen. That's all that's going to happen. Versus these people help raise me up, along with the people I met along the way, okay, to get where I'm at today. I'm very grateful. I no longer at Warner Brothers, by the way. I'm actually at uh, what's called the Skywalker Ranch, uh, up with George Lucas. And um, that's kind of like the culmination for me in my career. I'm really happy. And yes, a new film is great, by the way. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, well, of course, I'm a fanboy. <coughs> anyway, uh, you just wanted to, to kind of start out with that. I'm going to pass off the mic to each one of these folks and just have them say a couple things real quick about what it is that's important to them. Then I'm going to loop back, talk one more thing, then we're going to take questions, okay? So we had, we'd stayed in touch uh, through college and everything. And then um, we sort of lost touch for a couple of years and discovered that we lived like a half a mile from each other on Venice Beach in California. And I remember calling him um, and telling him where I was. And first of all, he couldn't believe that he was hearing from me. And then I told him, where I was, and I don't think 10 minutes passed before he was at my door. Um, and then um, we've had this great collaboration through both of our time at Warner Brothers um, ever since. And I might just say about Bill, he's on the Hall of Fame here too, so you can see his picture uh, and his information. What is it, three years, four years? Is it four years since? Um, 2008. 2008, he's on the Redner Hall of Fame, so you can see his information out in the hallway. Um, well, what can I say? Um, I agree with everything that John said about collaboration, uh, about working together, about a, a work ethic. I know John has a great work ethic, but we all, I think, all agree about not competing against one another, and we all agree that hard work, on time, uh, commitment to what you believe in, and what your work is, is, is very, very important. The most exciting development was really the establishment of the theater arts department because it provided an outlet for a lot of us who felt we had no one, no one really who understood us. For me, th this it was this program here, which 
Brian started and Marianne continued for so many years uh, that really taught us to discover ourselves because that's the most important thing you have to learn while you're here. The other stuff will get you into college and the other stuff may get you a job and the other stuff may get you money, but when you're talking about the stuff that will make you happy and, and will make you feel like uh, you know, a fulfilled person, you've done something in your life. Okay, why are we kind of talking like this versus me going, and I am a Foley artist and aren't I the greatest thing since sliced bread? What Lee said and what Mary knows, and Mary knows and Billy knows is that it's up to each of you individually. What do you go to sleep at night dreaming about doing? Okay, what is it that makes you happy? All right, what is it that you go, gee, I wish I could do that, but I really can't. Get rid of that. Pretend your mind's a computer. Because, you know, computer code, right? What I say, garbage in, garbage out? Don't, don't do that. Try it. Who the heck knows? There was no roadmap for me to get to where I am as Foley artist, truly. There wasn't. I was just open to trying things. I knew I, from being here, I wanted to be an actor. I knew that, well, I'm not sure I want to necessarily be an actor and therefore maybe just, you know, have to, you know, work, uh, you know, as a, <coughs> in, a, in a situation where I'm not making a lot of money. Uh, but, well, maybe directing. And I did that and was a little successful at that. But past that, I just, I was open to trying things, being, having courage. So again, for you all, what is it that makes you happy? Whether you go to bed at night dreaming about what you wake up in the morning, God, I really would like to do it. In fact, people also tell you, Dave, you are really good at a photographer. I mean, you remember that time we were out there on the beach? You're like, well, those are beautiful. Listen to what people say, you know, to some degree. Don't listen to the people who go, yeah, Dave, you know, you're kind of an okay guy, but I don't really like that much. Who cares? Who cares? The real friends will be with you through life. They'll only want the best for you, okay? Through good and bad, because that's the way life is, all right? But, so trust, but verify. Somebody says, yeah, man, I want to be your friend, you know? But their actions will speak much louder than words, okay? I really want to tell you that. Also, to get, circling back all the way now, in the film business, if you show up to the set a half hour before start time, you're on time. If you're there 15 minutes before, you're somewhat late. If you get there on your call time, you are late. Big time. Late. Why is that? By getting there early enough to get yourself settled, you're ready to start the job at the time you're supposed to start. You're not rolling in like, ah, oh, you know, it's 9 o'clock roll. Mm, let's have some coffee. Eh, let's uh, How are the kids? That's baloney. You know, there's big money's being paid to pay you well to do a job. Probably Schindler's List would be the most proud film that I have just because I think it's a very important film. Um, I have probably a top ten favorites, and I'm glad you mentioned that too because I would recommend to each one of you, if you have not, especially if you're into film, go to the AFI list of top 100 films and see them all. If you haven't, don't talk to me until you have, okay? Because you have to know where you came from to know where to go. That's not to say that you have to f do what Kurosawa did. You don't have to do what Spielberg did. But it's good to know what they did, what chances they took. Famous scene in Jaws, right? Shider's on the beach. Is there a shark out there? And the way those shots were, do you know what I'm talking about? Does anybody know about that? Okay. You know that. That's good. You'll be amazed how many people that are into film don't know that. Don't be that person. Absorb as much as you can. Learn as much as you can. Be a sponge. Don't be afraid to take chances. Ben Burt. Does anybody know who Ben Burt is? Ben Burt is the originator of all the Star Wars sound effects. Okay? And I see him now all the time in the hallways there, and he and I chat. And he said when he got into, you know, he and George went to USC, Lucas. And they made films together. And that's, you know, he didn't really know he was going to be doing sound, but he kept trying things. Again, I'm going to keep harping on this subject, try things. So that's my favorite film, and my top five favorite films are Back to the Future, E.T., uh, Empire Strikes Back, and I can't think of the other one. So, wait. But if we can refer back to what we saw this morning, you were seeing me and my par then partner perform analog, if you will. You know, I was in these silly high heels running, or et cetera. So in other words, we are a medium of artists that are creating things analog. So from a software standpoint, that's not something that we really massage what we did with. It does go past us.
to the supervising Foley editor, he, she, or them, and they will potentially take some of their software into it. Mind you, the Chevy, if you will, that's used universally in the sound world language-wise is called Pro Tools. So that's something you, you must know. But like anything, too, what's the most important thing? Let's say for sound, for me, what's the most important thing? Well, actually, are three. My ears and my brain. You know, what would you rather have if you need to have brain surgery? The best neurosurgeon in the world in a pretty well outfitted operating room or the best operating room, room in the world with uh, Joe Schmo. Do you see what I'm saying? Right? It's, it, the tools don't make the difference. Your mind does and the people you work with. Do I have a favorite way to make a sound? Um, well, as you saw, there were some footsteps and there were props. My favorite sounds to make, so to speak, are footsteps because they're by far the hardest things to do. Because if you can imagine, you're trying to make a sound of a guy running, let's say, um, on the snow uh, um, in a uh, uh, girl, girl with Dragon Tattoo. Was it Roger, Roger Craig? No, Daniel Craig. Da Daniel Craig. Roger. It's Daniel Craig. So we had to buy snow cone ice. Literally, like, you know, when you go to snow cone. So we buy that, put all that down, and we ha and I have to we're kind of run on that. Um, or let's say in uh, uh, um, Interstellar, we actually were taken to the Mojave Desert where they store uh, airplanes that are not being used at the moment. And we actually went into a fuselage and recorded some sounds of the robot feet. Now, that's something we typically don't do. We typically stay within the studio confines. But that's not to say we wouldn't do that. So, by the way, if I get off track and don't answer your question, you can. <laughs> is that my I, I, I'm old. Well, Other and it's, it's not unusual. There's many times I would have to go rent an airport somewhere because we needed to get... Um, I don't think you were involved in this when we rented that Indian motorcycle oh, for, uh, to, to, um, for the fastest, uh, I don't, in the world? I don't remember which movie it was, but we had to go, but you, so it's not enough to just go get the thing that make the device that makes the, the sound, you have to get a space to do it as well. So if you, so if you have a boat, um, a boat on the ocean is going to sound, a boat engine on the ocean is going to sound different than a boat engine sounds when you're um, in calmer water. And um, we had a, oh, Scooby-Doo. On Scooby-Doo, <laughs> we had, um, they actually had a shot where he, um, uh, Freddie jumps on, uh, Freddie Prince Jr., I don't know what character he was playing, but um, he, he jumps on an Indian motorcycle and the, the company was about to go out of business and we were trying to help prop them up and and they made sure that it had Indian you know on the thing and I remember getting a request we need to rent an airport and um, and we're getting this Indian bike and it's so I of course um, lost my temper and said why am I spending so much money for this and, and then you know they came back and said well because we have a deal with Indian and we're doing this and and you know like three sentences in and I knew okay well th then I, I will approve that and 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 there we go. And Indian ended up going out of business. We we weren't successful propping them up. But an Indian motorcycle sounds different from a Harley. And it sounds different from a Yamaha. And it sounds different from, you know, all these other things. Of course, those are real sound effects, if you will. What is a, you know, what does a laser sound like, you know, in Star Wars? Itself. Right. But, uh, so, in other words, if we were actually handing a real pistol like that, and it sounded like that, and we were actually going to fire it, we'd be afraid because it would probably blow up. It's true. Uh, I use an old weapon that no longer fires that has kind of things dangling on the side a little bit. Again, it's about the drama, which then circles back, let's say, to Marianne, because as an actor, you have to know about the drama. And that's true. I, any film I work on, you know, what is going on in the scene? You know, what's... Uh, and just, just so, maybe is that weapon something that's going to misfire? You know, and then the character's in mortal danger. So I want to make it sound even more so. You know, so we, we, we have that uh, premonition, if you will, that foreshadowing. You know, um, that's the beauty of what I do, so to speak, um, being able to, to, you know, bring the artistic, hopefully the artistic bend into it. Um, so, and one of the things that John did first um, in The Matrix, you, you heard the, the shell casings hitting the floor. I don't think I'd ever heard that in a movie before The Matrix, and John was the guy. Yeah, and, the real, and we realized when we actually first did that, we're taking the actual casings that they would use, uh, you know, because each, when you fire something like that, a, a, bullet, a weapon, you know, they have different sizes. Well, nothing sounded good except what's called a 50 caliber uh, casing, which is huge. But that sounded right. So there again. In fact, you know, job, my folly job, if you will, if I do my job right, you don't know I've done it. Uh, there are actually more astronauts in the world than there are foley artists. How about that? Right? 
So, uh, in fact, I moving up north, I, I've had to import uh, a gal from Southern California to come up work with me. You had a uh, in E.T., Steven Spielberg uh, came to myself, and actually the gentleman that hired me, his name was Chuck Campbell, a wonderful man. And that, here's somebody else who's actually with me now here on the, up here, but he's not here. He passed away some years ago. But again, I'm a culmination of all that's gone on before me. Long story short, Steven said, okay, um, that first time we see E.T., it's in the cornfield, and he's screaming. Bah! You know, We're afraid the kids are going to like dive into the chairs and run out. Make them sound funny. Funny. We go out to lunch, and my partner, then partner, Joan Robe, orders some Jello, and it gets thrown down on the on the tray. You know, that's it's kind of throwing that and going back and forth. She and I look at it, and we start cracking up. She went home that night. She cooked up a huge vat of Jello, brought it in the next day. I took one of my T-shirts. I taped up the neck and the arms, held it open. She she dumped the Jello into it, and then I folded up and held up the waste, if you will, and shook that in front of the microphone. And that was E.T.'s walk. And and then uh, he reminded me of a duck out of water, so I used my hands, you know, very un you know, oh, you might fall over at any moment. Again, that's the drama. That's what I learned here, okay. And I wouldn't have learned that if Brian Morgan hadn't said, "Come on in here." So when those opportunities knock, don't be afraid. What's the worst that could happen? It doesn't work out. You're young. Seriously, take a chance. It's okay, you know. It's critical that you do that. You don't want to be 65 years down the line going, Jesus, I, you know, do I really want to sell insurance all my life? Not, not that there's nothing wrong with that, but you know what I'm saying? If you have some other thing burning within you that's, more imp that's most important, do that. Try it anyway. And then Tinkerbell's Wings really quick. Uh, again, Stephen had said, I don't want, uh, this is in the film called Hook, I don't want people to really understand her dialogue or have, have uh, the dialogue that... Uh, what was that actress's name? Uh, Ro Julia Roberts. Um, I, I want her, her emotions to be known a different way. What does that mean, known a different way? So we had these kind of new age b balls that you'd hold them and then you'd shake them. they make this really neat sound. So we've got 10 of those. So each one of those, we assigned an emotion. So one of them, she was happy. Another one, she was sad. And that's what we did. So, you know. I just want to mention that I visited uh, John at his studio once, and I was absolutely fascinated by what he was doing. Uh, and the reason it was interesting to me is I'm not technically oriented, so, but I'm creative. So that's what I loved about what he does. It's a mix of, of the technical. And so some of you have a mix of that in you, too. Maybe you like the technical, or maybe you like the creative, or maybe you like to put both together. Um, that's what I was fascinated uh, by when I when I visited him and watched him working. I saw all these props and all these things on the floor and a whole room full of things. And I thought, this is amazing. This is so creative and so interesting to be working on. It would never be boring. Right. right. So never boring. So I, I loved watching it. And it would be, I thought, if I was ever going to do anything in film, that's the job I'd like to have. Because I, th I thought it was so creative and interesting. Well, you're free now. You can help yeah, me. Right. <laughs> Other questions? Sir? Uh, okay, good question. Uh, that's Ben Burt. Uh, there are very, what are called transmission lines. In other words, you know, power can be c created from various sources, typically a coal, what's called a coal-fired plant. It goes from there, a lot of power, and it gets distributed across the country or wherever you are. And there are huge towers that look like kind of They're guy lines that hold them down. He took a hammer, hit the guy line, and pow, and he recorded it. That's what he used for that. So basically what happens is when I uh, uh, work in a film, it's dissected into reels. Reels one, two, three, four, whatever. So reel one, I would look at the reel. I'd look at the cue sheets. Think of a road map from here, let's say, to Philadelphia Airport, right? You'd have to follow the road map to get there. So the road map had Marty's footsteps, channel one. Uh, Marty's jacket on channel two, Marty putting the key down outside of Doc Brown's layer three, and then et cetera. So I follow the cue sheets. Like they kind of tell me what it is to do. So, But it's up to me to decide the doing. Okay? So if you remember the opening, Marty comes there. Hey, Doc, you know, opens it, goes in, and you see uh, Einstein's uh, automatic food feeder. You know, you know, thing, right? And the can opens and it overturns, and we saw the toast popping up. 
that was all effects that I had done. And in fact, the robot arm, that was an old car door that was mounted on wheels that had a 12 volt battery attached to it. And I manipulated the uh, window going up and down for the robotic arm. Yeah, and again, it's not just me too, because back then there was a, I had some, uh, the mixer, Tim Sadler and, and uh, my, the, my partner. Um, whoever would like to, because this is very short, and I know it's kind of like a lot of talk, I'm going to give you my personal email address. Please don't abuse it or spam me. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Know two things. One, um, if I don't get back to you right away, hang tough. I'm just starting up at Lucasfilm, and it's been very rough getting going because we're actually they built us fully states to my specifications. So I'm still kind of in that mode. Uh, but uh, and and don't get me wrong, but take the take the question seriously. In other words, if you really want to ask me a question, please do. Video games typically are not um, fleshed out as well. Sorry, backing up. A feature is just that. You know, you look at the reel, you do all the feet first, then you do all the props. A video game that might be or might be not. In fact, you might have in-game stuff or cutscene stuff. Okay, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? Cutscene to be kind of like the film portion up to. Oh, now we're in the game. The cutscene stuff is fairly straightforward, like like a feature film. But the in-game stuff can be really crazy. In other words, uh, for I worked on uh, the Batman, Arkham Asylum, etc. And uh, we I had to do probably 800 different variations of the Batcave doing things. One after the other. Boy, well, my arm's tired. I know, I just flew in from Canada. So um, so there's that. And television also is a different beast altogether because there's no time in television. I have worked on television a little bit. So you have to kind of have a different mindset and different methodology. And then f commercials are that too because commercials are these. In fact, if you get a chance, go on to YouTube and look up uh, The Border. It's a Coca-Cola commercial. I actually folded that. It's, by the way, for filmmakers out there, too, it's a great story with no dialogue. And it's a commercial. It's like one minute. It was a Super Bowl commercial some years ago. Um, I highly recommend you do that. And it's really interesting to kind of see. And then my point then to you on, on answering the question is we had the all day to work on 60 seconds. So we could really make it nice. Okay. I wish you all great success. Don't be afraid. Go for it. Okay. Thank you. And thank Lee, Marianne, and Billy.